Hello and welcome. Today we're going to have lots of fun because we're going on a special walk in the woods or in nature. And just before we started rolling the camera, I named this painting. Well, we're going to call it the Gobble Trot. Now, it's up to you if you want to call it that. When we name our painting on the back, it's up to you. But we're going to be uh, painting a picture, I've sort of made this up in my mind, of the woods and maybe what you might see if you're walking in the woods where there are no highways or houses and it's it's really really a primitive sort of forest you might see some turkeys they're just the most surprising birds when you see them you go that's a turkey and your brain just goes ah look at that there's a turkey so that's what we're going to paint today now this is a pretty easy painting. I don't want you to get upset about uh, making turkey shapes because as most of the art that I teach, it's very impressionistic, which means you paint with your pastels the best way that you can. You just make the swoop of the back of the turkey and little legs. Don't worry about anything else. We're looking at these turkeys from pretty far away because if they see you, hey, they're gonna leave. So, let's get started. All right, today, <clears throat> today Nana has a scratchy voice, so I'm going to be going even more slower than usual because I don't want to just cough all over my painting. All right, I have a piece of yellow construction paper. Now I've turned it vertically like this. And um, <clears throat> underneath there is a piece of scratch paper to help hold this down because my goodness, we're gonna get so excited when we see these turkeys, that would, it could just end up all over the table. So, <clears throat> this is how we're going to plot the, the turkeys. We're gonna have woods up here and a path, and you'll be able to walk with your fingers and in your mind, take a turkey trot with us. So. We're going to have to have some moist paper towels to wipe off chalky fingers. These are the colors that we have chosen today. There's an awful lot. There's an awful lot of, of Thanksgiving turkey type colors. So there's, there's browns and reds and oranges and yellows. <coughs> Excuse me again. So we've got them all. We may not use all of these colors, but it's best to get yourself a sort of an array of different colors, okay? All right, first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take our brown and we're gonna put the, the path in. Now this is in an open area and I'm gonna start down here at the bottom. Now, to make myself remember that the path gets wider the closer you get to me or to the viewer. I'm going to go ahead and put the other side in. And then, here we go. And it just sort of disappears. Okay. Now, here's the other side of the road. Ooh, and it gets really skinny right there. Now most of your drawing is done. 
Okay, let's put in some background. There's a little bit of, of land right there. And I'm going to go ahead and put in some spindly looking trees. Just watch, see, just kind of do the best that you can. It's not important. These trees, <coughs> these trees are not the stars of the show. And we're gonna smudge them out of the way anyway. So, I think we need one more right there. They look like the letter Y. Okay, now put the brown down and we're going to go ahead and pick up the rust color. And down here at the very bottom, we're going to lay the chalk on its side and we're going to put in some Thanksgiving fall type undergrowth. These are, maybe you have sumac. Do you know what sumac is? It's a short little kind of compact plant in the south that changes brilliant colors. All right, I'm putting that rust color down. Then I'm going to pick up this bright red. And we don't need a whole lot of it, just enough to make an impression. All right. Down with that. And then here is the gold, our friend the gold. Very lightly, we're going to just go round and round and round. You see, you don't see each leaf at all, do you? No, this is what we call an impression. Now, here are two important tools right here. Right here. These are your painter fingers. I want you to, to get your painter fingers and go and smooth these colors together. <gasps> Look at that. And the, the trees themselves just almost disappear. They know not to make a big shout out to the person who's viewing it, the, the painting. No, no. They're being very nice and staying in the background. Now, if you really want to, Toward the end, you can take a bright blue and put in some sky. You don't have to do that. Nobody was ready for that. I just looked at it and said, ooh, we need some aqua blue in for the sky right there. Okay, now, this area here and here is grass, I think, that maybe the forest ranger has cut, or maybe the deer ate a lot of it. I don't know. We have to make up a story about that. Let's take our gold, and we're going to turn it on the side, and we're going to go ahead and just lightly put in some of the cut grass. You know how your grass may look in your front yard after there's a frost. You know, it's like, oh, it, this is dead, but it's still kind of pretty. Okay, now, I'm going to get a green. This really is a green, it's dirty. We are not proud of the fact that, that we don't clean our pastels that often, but they're always in use. So, just lightly skim over it and let's get a little bit of a green on here. See, I'm not covering it all up. No, it's just a bit. All right, two important, two important fingers.
try not to go over on the road. Okay. <clears throat> I'm really liking this, the beautiful fall colors in the wood. Okay. Now, this is an off-white. In fact, it's pink. I don't like that. Okay. This is the off-white. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of color on the road. Or the path, excuse me. All right. Now, let's get the rusty color. And watch this. We're going to make some grasses along the road. And on this side. And if you want to, you can even put some back up there. I'm going to smooth these in too. Now, as you can see, all these colors work well together. And they're not being loud and saying, look at me, look at me. No, they're not. Because they know there is a surprise coming. Okay, I'm wiping off my fingers. It's up to you if you would like to wipe off your fingers. You don't have to. All right. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this black to work. It will. All right, down here first, I'm going to make a hen turkey. And she's just kind of going to be pecking at the ground. All right, and here's her tail. And she's just sort of like, looks like an eye, doesn't she? Like an eyeball. Okay. Now, we're going to give her a few little spindly feet here. Actually, we're only going to show two. So, all right. And we're turning the chalk on the side. And we're going to color her almost all over. There is a spot right there. I'm going to leave white. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because turkey feathers do have some white on them. Now, we forgot her head. Poor old girl. We forgot her head. Now, technically, I want you to know this. Turkey hens do not have what we call a beard. So, this can be a young male. How about that? That's even better. And they're called a Jake. So, there's a Jake and not a, a turkey hen. Now she's just chewing around here in these grasses. Now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna put a, another young turkey right here. Now he's not going to be very big because he is seen from a distance, okay? And we're only gonna be able to see one leg. He doesn't have a head yet. Poor old thing. Now, remember, I'm going to leave a white space right there. You hunters can probably say, is that the bullseye? No, it's not. We're not going to even talk about that. Now that someone is asking, what if you don't have white? Just leave a spot. 
on your paper. Leave like I did, a, a white spot, okay? Or an open spot. Now, we're going to go ahead and put his head in. Now look, that wasn't hard at all. We didn't draw a whole turkey head. We just made an impression of the head. Now, here we go with the big boy. He's going to be up here. All right. And he is in all of his glory. Looks like a flower. Or the symbol for NBC News. Whatever. Okay. There's a wing right there. And here comes his neck. Right there. He didn't want to show you his neck too much this time of year. And there's some claws. And here's another one. And let's make a far away red beard. There we go. Okay. Now, if you look at this concept drawing here that I have, you will see there's some white feathers right there. Now, if you don't have a white, just be an artist and leave a space open. Now, we've got We've got the tree colors in here. That's okay. You know what it is. I know what it is. If you don't have a white, use a pale yellow or a any color that is light. I think that looks great. Now, let's give them a little bit of shadow right here. They don't like to be have much of a shadow. They are really kind of they get turkeys get spooked or scared very quickly. And they can see you from a long way away. I was told that turkey hunters have to wear a certain kind of hood on their head because a turkey can see you moving your eyes. Can you believe that? Okay, I think we're about finished. You can just play with this forever and make it just the way you like it. I think this is great. There's some turkeys. Shh. Pick your favorite color. Hmm, what's my favorite color today? I think it'll be the rust. Sign your name down here in the corner. And then flip your painting over and name it. Now, remember when we started, I said, I really like Gobble Trot. Because you're going to be trotting down the lane, okay? Or the turkeys will be. And then, so you name your painting, Thanksgiving turkeys, whatever, and today's date. Then, admire your painting. I would love for you to like and share this video. But best of all, best of all is for you to take a photo of this beautiful painting I know you've done. And you can put, put it in the comments. At the, on this video or on Instagram. And all this week, we're thankful for art here on our Facebook page. And then the gift of art is coming. Another surprise. Now, after our art time, head over to enjoy a thankful walk with Cindy of our 
journey westbound. She's a great friend, and I know she's got all sorts of things planned for you to see and to do, and have a great time with her, too. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, Nina, are we going to do one special surprise? Oh, my goodness. I think we've got time to do a surprise. Maybe one. Now, if you have just plain copy paper, here we go, students. Plain copy paper. This is going to be our three-minute turkey feather. Now, if you're going out to walk, you may find a turkey feather. So, this is what I want you to do. Can y'all see? Okay. Be aware of where you are and what you might be seeing. Okay. Now that looks like, I don't know, it could be an upside down frown, but it's not, it's gonna be a wonderful feather. And then let's make it like this. That's the end of it, okay? And make a matching side. Now, you can turn your brown sideways, or you can do just like little W's. But turkey feathers are very even. The feathers themselves. Now, why is that? It's because they really do fly. They'll fly away. And now we've got to have matching one over here on this side. Uh, this one, the turkey lost. So there may be some gaps. And it might not be so even. And we're just about finished. I think that's beautiful the way it is. Now, you can brighten this up in the middle with some white. And this is a pale yellow because I'm on white paper. I just thought I would use that. Okay, and we're going to put in some white here. Because remember I mentioned to you, you look for a turkey feather and they will have some white on them. Now, Let's also go ahead and put some of this beautiful rust color on it. You don't have to do every single section. Oh my goodness, it's been about three minutes. And I just wonder if you're finished. Now, we're gonna have curly and curvy feathers down here. Here we go. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now you can go back through and you can put some white in, 
You know me, I'm never finished. I, I just love to paint too much. You may have to bear down pretty well to make this white. This is the, the actual spine of the feather itself. You know, they use these to write with. They would find a turkey quill and they, they could sharpen the end of it, dip it in some, some ink and write away. And then I want to mention somebody, <coughs> Michelle said that she thought she was using black and it turned out to be deep blue. And what, what do we do when we end up with a color that we didn't mean to use? Well, there are no mistakes in pastels. I think a beautiful blue feather is absolutely stunning. You can pretend on your particular drawing today that is blue, you can say, oh, there was a peacock in the yard, and here is his feather. And then later on, if you want to, you can make a turkey feather. There's no mistakes at all. Just, just be happy about the colors that you accidentally picked up and see what you can do with them. That's what makes art fun. Now you can sign it and name it and go and show it around and let everybody see what an artist you are because you've done a great job today. We've done two wonderful paintings, two of them, and I'm very proud of you. Thank you again for being with us and always, always remember you are an artist.